doing some redecorating around here. As you can see, and there's a decided lack of yellow, and I do apologize, but I wore my yellow jacket, and I'm gonna get those walls painted as soon as possible so y'all don't feel totally discombobulated. I sure do. Anyways, I missed Softball Sunday this week, and, uh, you know, I've never been anti-U2. I just was never really exposed to U2, and this is how I learn about songs. Um, so I thought I'd do U2 All I Want Is You. I did this song with a student lately, and I, and I did it wrong. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> so now I know how to do it right, and you're all gonna know how to do it right before Joe, but don't worry, I'll send this to Joe. Okay, here we go. Anyways, the first hurdle one must overcome when wanting to play All I Want Is You is your guitar is not in standard tuning, but it is detuned one half step down. So instead of Eddie Eight Dynamite Goodbye Eddie, for the guitar string names, you're going to have E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, and E flat, that's called tuning down one half step. If you don't know how to do that, I've made a video on that, and the link for that will be in the description. This song is simple in form, but it does have an F sharp minor in it, so sorry, but I didn't do it. But not in the verse. The verse is just A. Give it all down strums if you want. You can strum it however you want if you want. You can strum it however you want, whether it's the right way or however you want. Either way, it'd be however you want. Anyways, and then you play D. On the A, you can take your ring finger off to suit your ear, and on the D, you can take your middle finger off however you like. promises that we made from the cradle to the grave. I'm going to call that the pre-chorus. This is where F sharp minor comes in. We're going to do two on the E string, four, four, and a boom across all of the strings there. That's a bar chord. If F sharp minor is your nemesis and you're going to quit playing guitar, if you have to play F sharp minor one more time, might I suggest you play the power chord. It could just be two fingers there, right? E2, A4, add your pinky finger there if you like on D4. And then try to get your bar, you know, someday. Maybe not today. If you have trouble getting those strings, perhaps just do the first three uh, little strings there in the second fret. That's normally how we play D major seven, but that isn't not an F sharp minor. And then when you're comfortable with that, try one finger. And then try putting your ring finger on D4. Now that's an honest to goodness F sharp minor when you're comfortable there. Grab A4 with your ring finger instead, and pinky finger goes on D4. And now you are similarly, but from the other angle of attack, zeroing in on your actual honest to goodness F sharp minor bar chord there. So, all the promises to D we made twice. Cradle to the grave. And then back to A, D. gets more strummy on the A, D, and more prescribed as to how you take your fingers off the A and the D chord, so it's gonna be all... Which is to say... On, off, on, off, on, off, on, D. string goes. And that's because that's where it ends up when you play your D chord, right? And also it's really smooth because it's your ring finger. If you play A the way I play A, some people play it. Well, it's still your ring finger regardless of how, unless you play it like that, but then you can't do any, any of this. So don't play it like that just this one time. So it's really smooth because it's your ring finger and your ring finger during that change is only just moving up one string and then the other fingers are switching behind it. There's that 
whole portion in the middle where it all starts to sound like Return to Oz or something, and uh, not the Oz, that's a totally different thing. And uh, I don't think that's the rhythm guitar, I think that's the supporting instruments and the bass playing a bunch of dominant sevenths. So, for instance, the bass does a lot of... Not exactly, but he throws those C notes in over the D chord, and those G notes in over the A chord, and those are the notes that make a, a 7 chord, and D, a 7 chord as well. So A7 is A, but with the open G string. And D7 is D, but instead of B string 3rd fret, we've got B string 1st fret. So you gotta switch all your fingers around, still G2 and E2. Um, but I personally would not include that if I was sitting in the living room uh, serenading my loved one here. Totally ruins the... <laughs> That's what's going on there. And to wrap things up, let's just say you're kind of a beginner, or let's just say you're not a beginner, but you don't spend much time not down here, and you want to edge it up a little bit. Uh, this is, you know, we could do a whole video on the extraneous things that the edge does in this song, but just to give you something, a little something to chew on here, um, for, for A, for the A chord, let's take an F-shaped A, but just three notes out of it. So your F, right, on frets one, two, and three, but we're gonna move it up two frets, four frets, to frets five, six, and seven, and let's not even worry about your ring finger note there. So we got E5, B5, and G5. This is an F-shaped A, so you can tinkle around on those. And when we switch to D, I thought I heard him, I thought I see, I saw him on a couple of the live versions I watched play a D suspended 2, which from this is very easy to get. This G string just goes from 6 to 7. So we have 5-5-7 five, five, now. And the only thing that's changing is that G string. So that's a satisfying and easy thing to do. And then the other way, now let's take it not an F-shaped A, but let's make it a D-shaped A. So count up with me here. We got a D. If we move it up two frets, it's E. One more fret, it's F. Two more frets, it's G. And two frets after that is A. The other way to know that this, what we're playing here, a D-shape on the ninth and 10th frets is A, is the root note of a D-shape, AKA the note that makes D, D, AKA, D uh, is on the B string. We know that the 12th fret is the octave spot. So if the 12th fret of the B string is B, and we count down to B flat A, we end up on the 10th fret with a root note A. And the shape for which the root note is on the B string is the D shape. So let's play our D shape again. This is another way of attacking, uh, getting to a D shaped A on the ninth and 10th frets with the ring finger on the B string 10th fret. That's how we know it's actually an A chord, even though it's a D shape. So you can pluck away on that. And then for D, what we could have, <laughs> what we could have is 10, 10, 11, that would be an F-shaped D, you may recognize from the whole thing we just talked about with the F-shaped A, but we're edging it up and we're doing something just a little bit different than playing the regular chord. So rather than play 10, 10, 11, let's go back to our D-shaped A and just add our pinky finger to the E string 10th fret. That is now a D-shaped A suspended four, just as doing that is a D suspended four. you'll see that it meshes really nicely with the chords from the song because in our shape here, this is a lot, this was not advertised on the thumbnail. Uh, this here we have a root and a fifth and a major third out of our D. So if this is a third, then that's a minor third. Now that's not in this song, that would be a D minor. And then that would be a second. So what you're playing here is not an A suspended four so much. It isn't not an A suspended four, but it's also a D suspended two. So try those and see how they mesh with the song with you jamming over, you know, edging it up.
And that is all I can possibly think to say about you two. All I want is you. Thank you so much for joining me today for this one. I hope you enjoyed that. I think there's three songs on the YouTube playlist now, but yeah, everything's a work in progress. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye.